This is the brand new 2017 Nerf AccuStrike Dart, considered to be the most accurate dart to date. Even though it's simplistic in design, it took multiple models created and tested and thousands of darts fired before they settled on this design. In this video, we're going to be discussing how the Nerf AccuStrike Dart was created. In October last year, a Wired.com article came out discussing how the Nerf AccuStrike Dart was created. They managed to interview some people on the Nerf team who were actually in charge of making this dart, and they discussed um, some of the designs and how they came up with the dart. And overall, I thought it was a really cool article, and that's why I wanted to share it with you guys on YouTube. In my opinion, I think giving consumers a more intimate, behind-the-scenes look on how Nerf products are made really brings about a new appreciation for the sheer amount of research and effort that goes into the Nerf products that we love so much. Unfortunately, this article isn't incredibly detailed because Nerf can't give away all their secrets, but like I said, I still thought this was really darn interesting. Let's rewind this to 2012. The brand new Nerf Elite darts came out and we thought, okay, this is finally going to be the solution to not very powerful and not very accurate streamlined darts. After they came out, people were pretty hyped. They're very powerful, but then we realized, wait a second, these are just as inaccurate as the old streamlined darts. In 2014, Hasbro tried to remedy this by releasing Nerf Elite suction darts. They were a bit more accurate, but they weren't exactly what we were looking for. For years, Hasbro has struggled to release good, accurate clip system darts. And like Nerf Marketing VP Michael Ritchie says, fans wanted more precise and accurate darts, and damn right was he right. In the article, they said that they began work on the Nerf AccuStrike dart around two years ago, and in that time, they came up with 10 different dart tip designs, which is pretty impressive. They also said some of the most important factors that affect dart accuracy is altered airflow whatever that means, and weight distribution. They also wanted to see what factors affect dart flight. To add in my own little bit of research that I did, this kind of stuff relates to external ballistics, which is the science of mechanics that studies how non-powered projectiles behave in flight. And major forces that affect the projectile, in this case an AccuStrike dart, is gravity, drag, and wind. So gravity, as we all know, is the downward pull on the dart, which is pretty much bullet drop. Drag slash air resistance is the frictional force exerted by air onto the dart, and wind can alter the trajectory of the dart. The most aerodynamic projectiles are ones that can reduce the drag force the most, aka pointed projectiles. For example, arrows or bullets. The next best thing after that are round nose projectiles, like elite darts, and after that, flat-headed projectiles like we see in the AccuStrike darts. And this makes sense because we see elite darts flying a lot further compared to AccuStrike darts. But the Nerf team was dealing with accuracy, not range, so they had to focus more on weight distribution, like they said, and stuff like stabilizing the dart mid-flight. The Elite Dart has very poor weight distribution and is very inaccurate. The AccuStrike dart, on the other hand, has a heavier tip, better weight distribution, and is more accurate. Spin is also very important for stabilization. With this corkscrew design, firing this dart induces a spin along the longitudinal axis, which makes it more resistant to deflecting forces, helping keeping this dart gyroscopically stable. Repeating that in English, spinning dart equals less likely to veer off course, equals more stable, equals more accurate, equals better for us when we're trying to actually hit stuff in Nerf Wars. Just to let you guys know, I'm not doing any physics courses right now. I'm not a physicist. This was all just kind of my personal research. So someone who's actually studying all these things will be able to explain it a lot better than me. But I tried. I wanted to add a little more value to this video instead of just summarizing this article because I thought that would just be kind of boring. And that reminds me, if you're liking the video so far, make sure you click the like button and the subscribe button, and I'll give you a digital high five if you've done that already. I'm releasing new content every Saturday if you didn't know, and if you're interested in buying any of my Nerf Blasters from my arsenal, links are in the description. So back to the video, the Nerf team had the job of taking into account all these forces and factors that I mentioned at first, plus even more physics and engineering and science-y stuff involved. They made prototype darts and tested them and tested them and tested them and you get the point. They used 3D modeling for fluid flow analysis, so that's another physics thing involved, fluid dynamics. They used computer modeling and wind tunnel testing, so overall a lot of work and that wasn't even all of it yet. After all those steps came the real world testing, and this part I found pretty cool. The team fired around 3,000 darts in controlled conditions at targets 30 feet away, and they also used wind tunnel testing to assess in-flight performance, and after all that, and probably more testing, 
this baby was born. I think all their hard work paid off. This is probably my favorite ammunition type right now. Obviously in the future it'd be great if they could create a dart with this accuracy but even better range. But until the future this is the present and this is what we got and honestly I can't really complain. A lot of work and research went into this video and I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you check out my AccuStrike dart comparison and review video. And if you want to, go down to the links below to buy your own AccuStrike darts. Until the next one, I'll see you guys later.